right, everyone, listen up. It's no secret the WNBA has seen a big jump in popularity and viewership, as well as kids in Canada taking up the game of basketball. There are many factors that do lead to this, including having role models for young kids to look up and emulate. And I'm here to tell you about one of those role models, Canada's Natalia Chanwa. Natalia Chanwa? Whoa! Oh, what a find to a Chanwa! She has a lot to be proud of, so try and keep up with me. WNBA star, ninth overall draft pick, two-time Olympian, four Final Four appearances with Notre Dame, 2015 All-Rookie Team, 2015 Pan Am Games Gold Medal, and the winner of two big awards off the court, the 2019 Community Assist Award in recognition of her commitment and dedication to giving back to the community, and the 2020 John Staley Community Leadership Award, which recognizes a WNBA player who best exemplifies the characteristics of a leader in the community. A lot can be said about Natalie Achanwa, including being at the top of her game. Well, Natalie, I'm so thrilled you could join us today. I know how busy you are. When we are recording this, you're getting ready to kick off the preseason, but actually when this airs, you'll be right in the swing of things. So we should probably talk about your relocation and your new team. How are things feeling in Minnesota? Amazing. I said this three days into camp, but I've kind of had a permanent smile on my face. Being a part of this Lynx organization and making that that move in the off season has been a, a huge moving point in my career. Uh, although moving to Minnesota has been a little bit rocky for mostly the dogs, but um, <laughs> I am thrilled to be a part of this organization and can't wait to actually start some real games here. Okay, well, I'm going to get to the sort of career trajectory part of the conversation in a little bit, but I have to reference your poem, and we were just able to air a little part of it, and I urge people to go check out the whole thing. Um, this is all part of this Mad Love campaign put on by Canada Basketball, but I want to talk about the inspiration behind the poem that, that you wrote. Where did it come from? I actually wrote it at about 4 a.m. when I was in Schio, Italy. We had just done the Mad Love um, notes that we had written to our younger self and mm -hmm. something wasn't sitting right with me and I was up at 4 a.m. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna write down some thoughts and turned into this poem that I sent to Matt Walker with um, our media department with Canada Basketball and it was like, this is how I feel and then we ran with it and it became this poem that is shared with everyone but it's my, it was my true feelings of not being able to always see people that look like me on TV, not being able to have this firsthand inspiration um, and the importance of visibility of women, of female athletes. And uh, by putting us on TV, you give us a chance to, to show how great, how multifaceted we are um, and how we can be these strong leaders for young girls and boys all over. There's so much to unpack and I'm so <laughs> passionate about this topic. Um, I mean, it's hard not to feel frustrated and angry, but are, are you seeing this movement inch along? We know that uh, in particular for the WNBA and the National Women's Soccer League last year, the numbers were way up. So things are headed in the right direction, but still you can't necessarily find the game on TV. Sometimes you're looking on Twitch, sometimes you're looking somewhere else, right? So <laughs> where are you at right now? I mean, it's always steps forwards. Being mad in the moment, yeah, you can feel your emotions, but it doesn't change anything. How can we keep pushing this envelope forward? And like you said, last year, the bubble, we put more games on TV and guess what? The ratings went up. I always put this on my social media, but now would you look at that? If you give us the opportunity, people will watch. If you give mm -hmm. us the investment, we'll bring you the return. Um, but that's what it is. It's an investment into women's basketball. It's an investment into women's sports. It's an investment into this next generation. You can't be what you cannot see. So if you don't put us on TV, how, how are we inspiring people? It's like we're this locked away secret, but I, I promise you put the money where your mouth is and it'll go a long way. You're referred to now as a veteran in the WNBA heading into your seventh season, which I mean, you're, you're young, but I mean, you've been doing it already for a long time, but you're the youngest on the junior team, the youngest on the senior national team, the youngest at, at the London Olympics. Um, so what do you take from that in terms of now being a leader? All those that came before me, I have been so fortunate, like 
tears thinking about the women that have mm. played before me that have like I said raised me that have shaped me into who I am and I wouldn't be here w without them it's my job to pass that along it's my job to pay it forward it's my job for the time and sacrifice that they invested in me for me to continue that trend forward so my body might say I'm old but <laughs> I'm <laughs> You're still, not I'm, for a while I was getting that young that young vet uh tag because I'd been through the rear so long, but I mean, now I'm, I'm really a vet and I'm just trying to, to continue, like I said, pay it forward. Who paved the way? Who, when you, when you talk about the women who, who took you under their wing, uh, who, who were they? Well, I mean, the crazy part is I'm still playing with one. Kim Smith has been uh, the face of Canada basketball. Uh, all these young players come and, but she has been one that has been invested and dedicated to Canada basketball for the last I always joke and say 20 years. It's maybe not almost. It's almost 20 years now. But I mean, Teresa Gabriel, uh, whoo, Tamara and Alicia Tatum, Lizanne Murphy, all these greats that played before me and that really sparked that love for Canada basketball. That's something that always sets us apart is you might see our roster and Many people might not know about the individual, but what sets us apart is how good we are together because of that investment in this team, because of this investment in Canada basketball. It goes beyond that name on the back. We wear that Canada on our chest crowd every time we get to put it in, put it on. And I mean, that's what makes us so special. And those women that came before us and the ones that will come after is knowing that the pride is representing the name on the front. Do you think people realize that you're fourth in the world heading into the Olympics? They better. <laughs> they better. <laughs> Listen, I will shout it from the rooftops because it, this is not something that's always been. This is the highest ranking we've been. So Canada basketball is fourth in the world and I will shout it from the rooftops. And at the same time, I will make sure that those expectations are in our team as well. So, you know, we are fourth in the world, but we do expect to be on the podium. This is our goal. We want to be on the podium. We want to medal in the Olympics in Tokyo. So yes, it, it feels great to this feat and to become fourth in the world, but we got to keep pushing forward. We can't be done with that and be satisfied with that. It's been a uh, remarkable, um, a difficult, a challenging, whatever you want to call it year plus at this point. Um, but the whole world now knows that the WNBA really led the way when it comes to cries for social justice and anti-racism and, and actually has always set the bar and has represented the gold standard when it comes to that. Um, what makes you proudest to play in that league? Hmm. A couple of things. One, to know that I am one of 44 and one of 44 amazing women. The uh, thing that's special about our league is that, yes, we don't have that one and done rule, but it also makes us one of the most educated women's sports leagues in the world. We probably have the highest number. Don't quote me on my facts, but all of us or most of us have college degrees. Most of us are doing multiple things, owning businesses, mothers in the bubble, in the bubble in the middle of a pandemic with a child. Like mm -hmm. these women are superheroes. <laughs> and I, that's something that always sits with me is to know that I'm amongst some great women, um, some strong leaders, uh, and to know that we always challenge ourselves, challenge our league, but also challenge those around us to not settle, to always challenge the status quo and um, to do what we can. I mean, we are so blessed to have this platform. Like I literally, people listen to me because I put a ball on a hoop. Like that is the craziest thing for me. <laughs> and, but at the same time, like my dad always is growing up has always said to whom much is given, much is required. So from that, I better put in the work. I better give back. I better help in my community or where I can, because like I said, I'm just fortunate to have this platform from playing a child's game. One of the areas of focus for you is the area of mental health. Why is that an important topic of conversation? Actually, when I was in college, uh, my best friend passed away from suicide and that's been something that's been um, on my heart ever since. And it's really important for me in my own mental health journey as well is to help erase that stigma, help erase that idea that because I'm this strong, passionate woman and athlete that I don't have my own battles, I don't have my own struggles, that it's okay to talk about things, that's okay mm -hmm. to feel these emotions, um, that it's okay to say I go to therapy. 
<laughs> and it's, it's just literally having that conversation and once again, using this platform so people feel more comfortable. People feel open to share their stories and not feel like they're always alone. We know with the newest collective bargaining agreement with the WNBA that uh, working conditions are ever improving. And I guess in, when it comes to women's leagues, again, that's, it represents a gold standard, but we also all know that there's a long way to go. Um, you do end up playing overseas in the WNBA off season. Is that something you wish you didn't have to do? I would love to have an off season. I love it. <laughs> right. it's off season because it's still in season, just in another country. <laughs> um, yes. I mean, I wish, and there will be a time, I will speak it into existence. There will be a time when women can decide if they want to play overseas and not be necessarily a must to supplement their income. Um, yes, we've taken strides with this new CBA, but um, I have been very fortunate to be able to be selective um, with my overseas. I know that my body can't, handle it. I know that I can't play an eight month season in Europe and then come to the WNBA and then play Team Canada. So I've been able to try to focus on playing in Asia because they have shorter seasons um, or like I did previous this past year, signing short term contracts with um, European teams that either someone got hurt or someone didn't show up or something. Um, but that's been the plan that's worked for me. And I've been very fortunate um, to have a team around me that sets me up for success. Um, and that I can find other ways to keep busy, other ways to make revenue so that I don't have to play that long overseas. Um, but I can't wait for the day. I can't wait for the day where the entire league can choose if they want to go and not just our, our big names mm -hmm. get to stay home because maybe they have the marketing money or if they've made enough money overseas in the past 10 years, they've been in the league, but there will be a day and I, I can't wait for it to um, allow women female athletes, um, basketball players to be able to just play in the WNBA. What do you think it would do for basketball in Canada if there was a women's league like the CEBL? I, I've always been intrigued in the idea. I would love, I've only played like at home at a professional level a few times. And I would love for a team. I would love for either a league or maybe a WNBA team to come. I know there's some conversations at some point about maybe playing our Commissioner's Cup in Canada. And I really, I hope I'm still playing when that happens because I would love it. I know the fans would be passionate. I know that we would, we would fill the stadium or the arena and I can't wait to that day and, and to be able to play on home soil. I know it, it means a lot to me to have my friends and my family all be there. Um, and I know, I mean, Kia and Bridget, they would, probably say the same thing, that being able to play on home, home soil is special. And I'm gonna leave you with the final question, and this is what we ask all of our interviewees, and this is something that you spend a lot of time contemplating. So the question is, what is your best advice to a young you? Hmm. Never quit, never give up. That was something, once again, instilled to me at a young age. Whenever we tried a new sport or tried something new, our parents never let us quit. I know my sister went through a couple of sports. She started tennis and never let her quit in the middle of the season. If you wanted to finish, you have to see it through. And I think that's true to this day, um, that if you keep that mentality, that keep that fight, keep that work hard um, and just and grind it out. And take breaks though. Like this whole like no rest thing, don't do that because <laughs> you burn out at 25. <laughs> so grind, but also rest. <laughs> I think that's perfect advice uh, in any arena. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.